In the last video, I talked about my latest efforts with, even hopes of, a Linux-based PC gaming rig, and if it can now, at last, in 2020, finally actually be a practical replacement for Windows from a gamer's point of view. It took me 14 minutes to pump out the SSD with Windows on it in my itty bitty smaller than a console Ryzen 5 3400G system, popping in a fresh SSD and watching a gaming focused Linux called Pop OS install on there in a fistful of minutes. It was fast and clean and without even a small hitch. I was thrilled. I've never been up and running this quickly with a fresh OS installed before in my life. It was stunningly joyful. Yes, I'm a nerd. Hello again, I am Blunty, and over the last couple of decades I've tried Linux a few times, but never before has it had, for me and my use cases, more worth than the work it took to get it there. Feel free to either agree with me in the comments section if you too have tried Linux and went, eh, I can't be bothered. Or indeed, if you're a Linux fan, attack me claiming I'm a Windows fanboy, or too dumb for Linux, or I'm using the wrong distro and this other distro is much easier. While you're there, down in the comment section, praising or complaining or agreeing, hit, why don't you go ahead and check if the sub button is clicked. Have you hit the jingle jangle bell? Thought about those thumbs? Hintity hint hint, please. And just as I talked about in the first video on this, Pop OS has some clever and helpful utilities and programs pre-installed to make gaming as close to seamless as it can be on Windows. Even for games and launches that aren't designed for Linux, Steam is ready to install right from the built-in app finder. Steam has a Linux version and many Steam games come with Linux versions of their own. But many, quite a lot, probably most actually, are Windows only. But this doesn't stop Pop OS. Steam itself has a feature, off by default but easy to turn on from the settings page, called Proton. Pop OS also has a thing called Wine installed, and both Proton and Wine are compatibility layers which take code meant for Windows and kind of translate it into Linux talk. And both are fast enough to make even running a Windows game near enough to seamless. I broke this stuff down in a bit more detail in the first video, so if you missed that video and are curious about the stuff, the link is in the usual places. This video is more show and tell about the results that I got when I tried this. Pop OS itself makes it easier than I've ever experienced to just get up and running. Steam was loaded and installed from their App Finder store thing without issue within minutes of logging in. And so I put it to work downloading a stack of games, both high end and low end, with both native Linux versions and Windows only versions. And via Lutris, a program that, with the help of Wine, can install games and launches that don't live on Steam, like GOG or Battle.net or Origin or Uplay, and for my testing purposes, the Epic Games Launcher. It too installed without a fight, and without ever having to launch a terminal window to issue a text command, something Linux devotees cling to with a romanticism that is frankly baffling to me. So I, I get it. Command lines make you feel clever and powerful, and if you soak in them every single day, you can get shit done super fast. But please, Linux nerds, recognize that by far the vast majority of people using a computer just want shit to be intuitive. Point. Click. Done. And command lines are none of that. If you want to simultaneously say, "Oh, Linux is here for the desktop at last. This is the year. This is the year of Linux at last." You, then, you, then you got to, you got to, you got to hide the command line away. Never show it to a user. Never ask a user to use it for any reason. It drives me nuts every time I see someone asking for help with a Linux issue, and without fail, the answer is potentially delivered. Usually, oh, it's easy. All you have to do is type in this enormous gobble de goop string of alphabet soup. How did you not know how to solve this on your own? It's obvious. You just need to learn the commands properly. People don't want to do that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Linux nerd rant over. Once the Steam and Epic launches were installed, the Epic one took a little extra time as there was a whole bunch of Wine dependencies that weren't pre-installed that it absolutely needed. But once installed, they worked as seamlessly as they do sitting on a bloated mess that is Windows. I started easy. Enter the Gungeon, both simple and small and easy to run. Remember, this system is running on a comparatively humble Ryzen 5 3400G without a discrete graphics cards. Gungeon also has a native Linux install. So we're easing ourselves in here. And as you'd imagine, and frankly, should bloody well expect, it ran flawlessly. So next, I stepped it up. Another low demand indie game, Donut County. A super cute and remarkably fun little puzzle game. 
But this game has no Linux version. So this will be running the Windows code using Steam's Proton compatibility layer. Instant success. It ran flawlessly. Nothing to do. Hit play. Started playing. There was no hint, no shadow, not the slightest inkling that this game's code was never written to run on a Linux-based machine. So that's all pretty promising, especially considering that, like quite a lot of indie games, it uses the Unity game engine. So time to step it up again. Next on the list was Borderlands 2. It runs on a modified version of Unreal Engine 3. Another common family of game engine. And this is a big, full-fat, properly AAA title. But to ease us in, this also has a Linux version. So no compatibility layer needed. And the game ran well enough. I think I probably should have backed off some of the graphics settings a little bit further than I did, as while it was mostly smooth and clean, I did dip below the 30 FPS mark, felt some fat lag in the heat of battle sometimes, but I'm confident to put that down to the limited hardware and the overambitious graphics settings I was using rather than the software underneath. The larger point here is the game ran without issue. Doom next. It's an interesting case. It had no Linux port, so it needs the Proton compatibility layer, but it does have the ability to use the Vulkan API, which, being open, Linux plays nice with, as opposed to some games I tested which use the various flavors of the closed-off Microsoft DirectX, which is a lot less Linux friendly and needs Wine or Proton to translate for it. So, with friendly Vulkan but unfriendly Windows-only code, how do we do on this high Twitch experience? Not bad, actually. Again, the lower-end hardware meant backing off some settings, but the actual gameplay felt fine. I didn't feel any intrusive lag or stutters or delays from the fact that the code is passing through a compatibility layer on its way to the Linux. The Linux? That's not how you say that. <laughs> anyway, it's all good news so far, right? How about Skyrim? Once more, no native Linux port, so we'll be translating from Windows, thanks to Proton. And with this game running on Bethesda's notoriously, sometimes hilariously hulking, clattering, pathetic creation engine, what can we expect? Nothing, actually. It's completely fine. Uh, as fine as Skyrim ever runs in its native, unmodded form, at least, because creation engine, <laughs> Bethesda. Once more, smooth, clean, issue-free gaming that allowed me some chicken murder, which was met immediately with sociopathic villager rage that resulted in my death, despite some well-placed neck arrows. Skyrim! Another big name forever lasting title now, GTA V. Another one without native Linux code, and another one using a proprietary in-house game engine, this time Rockstar's Rage, or Rockstar Advance Game Engine. This was my first hitch. I know for a fact that GTA V at slightly higher than these settings on this exact hardware, in fact this literal exact machine, will run at about 45 FPS, super smooth, under Windows. And I have the video to prove it out of when I first reviewed this CPU. And the only thing that's changed since I tested that is, and now I've got Pop! OS instead of Windows on it, and the SSD it's running off is actually faster than the one Windows is running on, so you can't blame that either. So here, under Linux, an odd and inconsistent stuttering in GTA V, which is why I tried lower settings and I know this hardware can do in the first place, it might be worth digging into further, but my suspicion is it's some kind of video memory bandwidth issue. Again, despite under Windows, this exact same precise configuration having no issues, perhaps the Linux flavor of AMD's drivers for this APU is at fault. I decided not to dig down into it, at least not yet, as the whole idea of this project was to see if Linux gaming was as fast and as easy as Windows. And spending time trying to find out why this game was stuttering its way into absolute unplayability means it failed that test. If it just works on Windows and doesn't just work here, then it's not an acceptable substitute, is it? Now, sure, if I had settled on making this my gaming rig, I'd surely spend time trying to get the game running properly. But time spent fixing an issue that shouldn't exist is time not spent gaming. And again, this is all about finding out of Linux if Pop! OS is a good idea for a gamer. Not a tech head. Only one fail so far though. Hardly a showstopper, right? Well, how about Monster Hunter World, which uses Capcom's in-house MT framework game engine, and also has no Linux install. Well, it refused to do anything at all but show me the main menu. Badly. The frame rate dropped to 2 FPS, and I couldn't control the mouse to any extent that would let me access the settings menu or any menu at all. 
I had to force quit the damn thing. Useless. Like GTA 5, I didn't bother spending time trying to solve the issue because on Windows, this isn't an issue that I've ever had to deal with on any hardware combination. My time in Porsche came next. Team 17's rather charming slice of life, open world, farming sim, life sim game thing. It too has no Linux port, but runs on Unity, which we've seen success with so far. So fingers crossed and yep. Sure enough, no worries here. Runs about as well as it does natively under Windows. No hitching, no glitches, no instability, no worries. Just gentle pastels and stick gathering and stone gathering and tool crafting and tree chopping and... <sighs> no Man's Sky. No Linux port. And no, 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 no launch even. Much like the actual launch of the game, this was a complete and utter failure. This game can run on Linux using Proton. I've seen evidence of it. In fact, one of its updates late last year even mentioned improve Linux compatibility specifically. But here, for whatever reason, it just crashes before it could do so much as show me a splash screen. And again, let's be specific about this. In the spirit of these tests, I spent no extra time trying to problem solve. As again, this game has launched without complaint on literally every other system under Windows I've ever tried it on. How about South Park Stick of Truth? It runs on the Snowdrop engine. It has no Linux port and it runs flawlessly. It's South Park, so the frame rate isn't really an issue. In fact, I think it's locked at 30 FPS and has no other graphics option to change that because what would be the point in showing you 60 frames per second South Park animation? <laughs> but it launched and it ran without any issue at all. A perfect experience on this one. Temtem now, another Unity game engine, so hey, we should be right, but the first one I tested that's not actually a finished game. It's still incomplete, it's in early access, and without a Linux native install at all, this Pokemon inspired MMO is another failure. The game wasn't out when I first built this machine, so I didn't test it under Windows on this specific hardware, but I know for a fact this game will run on much lesser hardware, like the original GPD handheld for example. Way less powerful, and I can still get this game running on it. But here, no matter what, all I saw was massive stuttering, resulting in a completely unplayable game. How about Witcher 3? It's a big deal again at the moment. The Netflix series came out and a whole bunch of people came back to Witcher 3 and a whole bunch of new people bought the game. And it's another game with an in-house game engine in CD Projekt's Red Engine. And yet another game we have to rely on compatibility layers for because it is without a Linux port. And it runs as well as you can hope for at this level of hardware. At 720p and 30fps, it's not what I'd call ideal, but once more, I feel like I have to keep repeating this because I know someone's going to miss the point, this is about the game just running properly and not about the power of the hardware itself. Again, even with layers of code sitting between the game and the operating system doing some translating and trickery, it didn't feel like it was doing that. It was smooth and responsive at all times. Well, as responsive as Witcher 3 ever feels, that is. I never really did enjoy the flow and feel of combat in this game at all that much. How about 2013's fantastic Tomb Raider reboot from Crystal Dynamics? It does have native Linux code, and they use their own in-house game engine, the Crystal Engine. But it refused to launch. It kind of glitched out in this weird window thing it was trying to do, and it just made me force close it. No matter what I did, changing resolution, anything like that, it just it wouldn't launch. So, annoyed by this, I moved on to Rise of the Tomb Raider, its sequel. It uses a heavily modified version of the original's game engine. So modified, it got a new name. They now called it the Foundation Engine. And like its predecessor, it too has a nice native Linux port. Unlike its predecessor, it worked first try. I mean, running this game on anything but the most powerful GPU almost seems like a waste. Even just the ice in these lower settings is jarringly less impressive than their maximum possible prettiness, which is very pretty when you turn everything all the way up. You know, again, 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 the point is the game runs smooth and flawless as far as gameplay goes. It worked first time, no worries, easy does it. Curious about this, I broke my rule a little and went back to the original game. This time I launched it in windowed mode. And when that worked, from there I used the in-game settings instead of the launcher settings to force it back to full screen, and that worked. So, weird bug, but fairly simple fix, and a fix that I didn't need any Linux command line bullcrap to solve, or even didn't have to spend any time searching a Linux gamer forums for solutions and crap like that. Just a fairly straightforward and logical test procedure that anyone would try when hitting issues like this. At least you'd hope. So, I will forgive this one. It's not a failure anymore. It was just a, a little stumble at the starting block. 
Once it did run properly though, it did so with the smoothness and issue-free gameplay you'd expect from a native coded game. But outside of these games just working or just not working as the case may be, I did hit several other issues. On a few occasions, the audio on my system just stopped working at all. Nothing I did would fix it except for a full complete cold reboot. This is an issue I've hit before on other Linux installs on completely different hardware. There's something about audio drivers and Linux and gaming that just consistently screws up. That's frustrating. That's a problem I don't have to face on Windows. Here's another problem my Xbox One S controller. It should work with this OS. It's, it's, you know, it connects, but then it disconnects and then it reconnects and then it disconnects and then it reconnects and then it disconnects and it just cycles that over and over and over again. There is a fix for it I found when Googling out of curiosity, but again, it's one of those command line fixes. You have to use a command line to disable a specific service and enable something else and install this thing. And it's no, that's not what a regular user should do just to get a controller working on a system designed to run games. So for all these tests where I wasn't using a controller, I was using a third party wired gaming controller, Xbox style thing, uh, plugged into USB. And even then it didn't work perfectly because there's an LED on that controller that didn't illuminate for some reason. The controller worked, but the LED didn't, didn't illuminate. And even with that controller, sometimes games wouldn't recognize the controller. I know for a fact the controller works because I was just using it. But then I'd boot a game and the controller would just wouldn't work. So I went to mouse and keyboard. But then the next time I launched that game to test something else, or you know, record some footage or whatever, then the controller would work. Don't know why, nothing changed. I didn't unplug it, I didn't replug it. I didn't reboot the machine between these attempts. It just, sometimes the controller works, sometimes it didn't. And once more, on a system, from a gamer's perspective, having a controller just sometimes not work for who knows why, that's not a good experience. So, what about non-Steam games now? Over to the Epic Launcher. It installed and ran on Linux with the help of Pop's pre-installed Lutris, which serves more or less as a kind of friendly front end for the Wine Windows compatibility layer, which you would otherwise need command line jiggery for. And although Dauntless seemed to launch fine, albeit a bit more sluggish than I'm used to, we finally hit the huge problem I was anticipating from Linux gaming outside of Steam's garden. Dauntless, like quite a few online multiplayer games, uses third-party anti-cheat software. In this case, the much hated, by the way, Easy Anti-Cheat, or EAC for short. Even on my main system, my main Windows rig, this piece of crap is an endless annoyance, as one of the applications that controls my RGB lighting on that rig is flagged as a cheating software by this stupid stuff stupid program and they haven't fixed it for years. People have been telling them about this for years, this, this exact problem I face with this with RGB software, and they refuse to fix it. So I have to force close the service that controls my RGB lighting whenever I want to play Dawnless. And this is far from the only example of users butting against this idiot software. It causes issues everywhere. On Windows, there's normally some sort of workaround for it, like there is for my issue. But there is no workaround for it on Linux. It just doesn't work. Search for easy anti-cheat and Linux in a Google search and you'll find endless posts complaining about it. And again, they refuse to fix it. They know it's a problem. They've been told it's a problem for years on end and they refuse to address it. And guess what? The world's second most popular game behind Minecraft, Fortnite also uses an anti-cheat software and also refuses to work. Except Fortnite's doesn't ping it until after you've already connected and gotten into a match. So we know for a fact the game will run under Linux, but it's third-party crappy badly made piece of shit easy anti-cheat software bullcrappery. Stop it from working. The third of my Epic Store games did work fine though. Borderlands 3. Number two from my Steam library worked fine and it had a native Linux port. So this is where I decided to cap off, seeing as the third one is on my Epic launcher. But as far as I know, none of the games on Epic's storefront even have an option for Linux installs. And even the Epic launcher itself doesn't have a Linux port, which is why I needed to use the other piece of software to get it to install in the first place. But the Steam version of Borderlands 3 only lists Windows as well. So unlike 2, it doesn't have a Linux port at all, no matter what storefront you get it from. It does run though, as you can see. 
It's not without issue, but the lag and stutter I saw were certainly the underpowered machine as it didn't run well on this rig, even under Windows either. I don't even think I included it in the original review that I did because it just wasn't worth it. But once more, the proof of concept here in, in, in this context is the fact that the game runs when asked to, despite not being designed for Linux. So on properly powerful hardware that was more appropriate for this game, I don't see a problem. So at the end of the day, what's the score? Well, to expand on the comments I made at the end of the previous video, gaming in Pop! OS is the best and easiest I've ever seen on Linux. On Linux. That's the qualifier. And it's a showstopper qualifier. It's the best yet on Linux. But I can't even come close to being free from Windows yet. Not all games just work. There's some that just don't work at all. We'll never have a hope of working. Some that just don't run properly, and some that need extra time and effort and fiddling just to get them working at all like they should out of a fresh install on a Windows system. So Linux gaming is better than it ever has been, perhaps even good enough for some people. But it is still what Linux gaming always has been to some extent or another. It is more work than it needs to be when compared to Windows gaming. And I can't see that changing anytime soon. It's nice to be able to say that it is a legitimate option, and this is a legitimate option if, more qualifiers, if you are willing to make some sacrifices and spend more time not gaming to fiddle and fine tune and tweak and research and read forum posts instead of actually gaming. And to be fair, some people are willing to make that compromise, either to be out from under Microsoft's boot and onto a free and open source field, or just because it can be an enjoyable process to problem solve and figure things out and learn. I certainly like doing that, just not enough to cope with the compromises here. Personally, I'm not there yet. I love fiddling with computers, always have done, but I like gaming more. And when I want to game, I want to game. I do not want to be fiddling around trying to get my computer to let me play a game when on a Windows machine, I could just install the game, play the game. It's the same reason I own a Mac for work. It stays out of my way while under the same workflows, Windows keeps getting underfoot. It is so frustrating. And the difference is with gaming, Macs suck. So Windows is still the default choice and Linux is still too much of a hobbyist choice to be truly a mainstream option. And without being a mainstream option or without being mainstream enough, the install base is never going to grow big enough for most game developers to spend time worrying about. So we're always going to be stuck with these compatibility layers. And, and if you're stuck with the compatibility layers and not everything's going to work right, and then, the, and then the user base doesn't grow because it's too frustrating, it takes too much work, and thus the cycle continues. Linux may never, ever, ever, ever be a proper gaming choice unless something really big changes. These, these little evolutions, Linux getting just a bit better, just a bit better, just a bit better. It's not getting better fast enough to make a difference. And that's frustrating because I want it. I want Windows to have proper, serious competition when it comes to gaming because it's good for all of us if that happens. But we're not there. This isn't it. All that said, Pop! OS is very impressive. I like it a lot more than I have done any Linux install to date, from, from their UI to the installation process to the, to the general workflow kind of thing. It's clean and fast and efficient and sensible. I haven't had to Google anything to find out where a certain setting is. It's just, it's where it should be, where you expect it to be. So I think I'll make a proper project box for Pop! OS, something with a bit more power than this top tier Ryzen EPU can afford me. And I'm going to keep messing around with it, keep playing with it, just every now and again, come back to it, have a poke at it. So do let me know if there is anything specific or anything else you want me to try with Pop! OS or Linux gaming in general. If you've got any advice, any curiosities, uh, 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 let me know. There might be future videos in it because I'm interested in Pop! OS. It's just not good enough to be a replacement for a Windows gaming machine in any shape or form at the moment for me particularly because it doesn't run Dauntless, and I play the hell out of that game. Thanks for watching, I am Blunty, and we'll catch you next time.